Hey everyone, it's Nicole from Wiki. Welcome to the NBA preview um, for oh, the games on Thursday, the 30th of November, Aussie time. Welcome, Jacob. How are you? Going well, thanks, mate. I'm really enjoying the in-season tournament. I think I've been touching on this each week. Now we're set for the knockout stages, the final eight. So that's adds some extra excitement. Those games are going to be next week, but we always get a good slate of games for NBA Wednesday, which is Thursday Australian time. So we've got a marquee matchup to talk about for tomorrow. Yep, awesome. Well, with the odds comparison tool, we are dependent when we record the pod, we record about 8 p.m. Aussie time. I don't want to repeat the whole thing again, but we are a little bit dependent on when the bookies get the markets out. So they aren't all up just yet. Jacob's still going to try um talk through a couple of the picks that he likes. Uh, we'll still show off the odds comparison tool, but obviously morning of game day or Aussie time at least. Um, If you do check out the odds comparison tool, just Google Wiki Linktree. You'll find that as well as this pod on here. Uh, we'll have a lot more markets and bookies to choose from. But uh, I will share my screen and, and let you get to it, Jacob. Yeah, we're going to talk 76ers again. Feels like they've been uh, one of the big games each week for us to dissect. And this game, they're going to visit the Pelicans. Now, the Pelicans are only 9-9 nine and nine after 18 games. But importantly, they did go 3-1 and one in their in-season tournament group. And they advanced from arguably one of the tougher groups. So the Pelicans are flying high into the knockout phases. Something that Philly was unable to manage. Uh, but the 76ers probably took out some of their frustrations most recently, pumping the Lakers by 40 plus, uh, while the Pelicans actually, after a, a big win to get into the knockout bracket for the tournament, have lost back to back tight games in Utah. Now, every time I look at Philly, I've, I've got to shout out Coops in the tripod group. He tipped preseason Tyrese Maxey. He's just having a whale of a season. Tipped him for most improved player at $11, which is a great shout. You know, we can interact in the group. And I said at the time that that's such a great selection because he had not really been able to carve out a defined role in his young NBA career, but has all the ability. Now, Philly has executed the Harden trade. The opportunity is there. And Maxey's your odds on basically $2. Uh, for most improved and is the clear second option behind the league MVP on the 76ers, who is Joel Embiid. And I give myself a wrap because I did tip Embiid last season in the tripod group. Uh, and so those two have both gone well again this year, but there's a third player on the 76ers who has flourished that I want to talk about. And in addition, in addition to the Harden trade, there's a new coach to Nick Nurse. And I feel like the style of play that's been introduced is allowing Tobias Harris have a really strong year and look revitalized and get more possessions and I want to target him against the Pels now for one he's actually shooting better than 50% from the field which is a great shooting percentage but has been really cold from three recently he has only made one of his last 12 three pointers I'm actually looking at that as a streak that he can kind of break and if he can knock down one or two early he's the kind of player that really plays off confidence and can get himself in the game and what you find is the games where he makes more outside shots tend to also be the games where then he takes more drives and gets more free throws so I'm going to tip Harris 25 plus I have a look at the odds comparison tool and I can see 750 which I don't mind but something else the odds comparison tool tells you not just the best price but how many bookies have that market and I only see it in a couple of spots so that's telling me hold out we may achieve even higher odds, depending on when you catch this clip, if it's later Wednesday night or certainly Thursday morning. If you like my value shot, have a look on the tool, see what the best price is around uh, Tobias Harris 25+. plus. No, awesome. I know for uh, for our marketing guys who now edit this pod instead of me, which is awesome, <laughs> uh, we're going to try to get this out. Jacob and I record this around 8, just after 8 p.m. Sydney time, and, uh, and our aim is to get this potty out around 10 p.m. Sydney time. So you should be able to catch it just before you go to bed. And obviously, if you if you want to wait till the next morning, no problems at all in the potty. And also, the odds comparisons will have more more bookies, more markets ready for you on um on Thursday morning Aussie time. Now, another stat about Harris, I'm saying twenty five plus and seven fifty is a decent price, and I would hope that you may even get eights or nines. But um, I have to admit, he's only hit that once this season in seventeen games. So when you're hearing that, you're thinking, well, that doesn't compute to a good strike rate. But the thing is, he averages over 18 and has had 23 or more five times. So he's been, you know, so close. And again, I feel like, therefore, that market's not really paying out too often on Harris. 
but he's really not too far away. He can give us a shot against the New Orleans team that plays at a fast pace too, which pace equals more possessions, equals more shots, more opportunity to put up the points. But uh, does that remind you of any NRL players, Nicole, where their strike rate is actually not great, let's say, for that given season? But if yep. you're actually watching the games, you've seen them get really close multiple times. Maybe it's a player who has had a try disallowed a couple of times. So you're like, well, the stats is saying they're only one in 17, but yep. they're dead set having they're going close once in every four. That's where you might find a market inefficiency. Hell yeah. So um, I, I can't think of someone who's played for a long period of time, but if you remember the Sharkies middle forwards this year, there was, there was Royce Hunt and there was, oh, I can't believe I forgot it. Who was that Sharks bench middle? Tom Hazleton. Tom mm-hmm. Hazelton, that was it. Yeah. So like the rugby league example is like I've been doing this for more than 10 years with tri scores. So I watch I watched the game in a completely different way, right? So I watched Tom Hazelton. I had no idea who this like bloke was at the start of the season. And he kept bending the line whenever he came on, but he didn't look like a, a typical um like a Maori or an islander bloke who's like super, super big field either. And he kept bending the line and he almost got there a couple of times. I remember tipping him a couple of weeks in a row. And then I think he went on to score two tries or maybe three tries in about five or six weeks. And there was one where I tipped him at 81's first try score, second half. He got a strip on the halfway line and sprinted away as a middle forward and scored, but it was disallowed. So I think it's one of those where like, with I think the thing that you get with both Jacob and, and I with our, with our punting, you can't necessarily go off what's happened in the past. If you want to use that as a guy, just like Jacob has, but if you're telling me he's going to one from the one from his last 12 threes, that tells me that he's going to be in or, like in or around that mark. And he's still averaging close to 25. And you give me a price of 750, that, that sounds pretty good. And hopefully we can get something that's sort of $9 or better tomorrow as well. That's what I'm hoping. Give us a chance. It's one of those guys where it can go the other way too. He can come out and miss his first couple of shots and then get really timid and then yep. go not, not even go close. But that's actually why I like those going for that higher odds play rather than just saying let's purely play him overs on his game over under which may be set at 18 and a half because he can miss it by 10 points but he can exceed it by 10 points which is what we're looking for hell yeah and i think if i'm just going back to that just for a quick second i remember we removed greg and royce hunt they're the other two that i thought of was like middle forwards that like they weren't well they're still not really household names but like you just saw them in and around the line like really pushing hard and then bang, like that happens to actually score a couple of tries in the second half of the season. So, um, yeah, I, I really, I've been enjoying, I hope the people who are listening to this are, are also enjoying it, but I think it's been nice. Like Jacob, obviously with NRL, you, you're mainly doing handicapping um, and sort of like, you know, roughly even odds, right? So it's been nice to kind of hear you talk about it just as I'm getting to know the sports a little bit more and looking out for these value players. It could be, I, I guess if you're only to put in a small stake on and it's not a multi, it's a little bit more fun riding these as well. So um, it's been interesting having, a, I guess, a different look on it. Yeah, it's been good fun. Just one extra thing to uh, take an interest in every Thursday and people can see how my tips go anyway. It's for everyone to see. Um, yeah. Some have certainly gone better than others. Awesome. Cool. All right. Well, thanks, guys. Uh, as again, uh, Google Wiki Link Tree, you'll find our potty and, and the OCT and everything on there. Obviously, you guys know Tripod, um, Punter's Facebook group, help them get to 30K. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you next week.